What is the best HF radio coming into 2023, coming through the holiday season of 2022, where we're seeing a lot of sales, a lot of inventory be kind of really up and down? But what is the best HF ham radio for 2023 in the beginning? If you're a new ham radio operator and you're looking to get into HF, if you've just got your general license and you want to go out and do some parks on the air, you want to set up your home base station, this video is for you. Check it out. Ham Radio 2.0 reviews, news, and how-tos of things that are new in ham radio. Thank you for joining. I'm Jason, KC5HWB. I really like talking about new radios and giving suggestions to new ham radio operators. If you just got your general ticket and you're looking to get into HF ham radio to make long-distance contacts and DX contacts overseas, this is the video for you. We're going to start out here, and a couple of these radios are out of stock Okay, but I'm going to start at, I've got seven radios to talk to you about today. And they range in price from lowest price to highest price. This is not a complete list. There are plenty of other radios you might want to check out. If you've got a budget that's larger than anything we talk about today, then you are welcome to keep on looking. And I'm, maybe I'll do a uh, top tier, top of the line, top featured, top price tag <laughs> video for later but we're going to start right here with this icom ic 718 now this is a no frills no waterfall monochrome display 100 watt radio and i should also preface that we're only going to be talking about 100 watt radios today we're not talking about qrp radios or backpackable radios we're mostly talking about 100 watt what's called full power radios this is a 100 watt radio from icom it is an older style older version it's been around for a long time but it's tried and true it is a just, it's basically got everything you need to just get on the air and make contacts. It's got a front firing speaker over there on the left. You can see the display there. It's, it's not color, like I said a minute ago. You can read down here and see all of these features that it comes with. The one currently being sold by Gigaparts, which is one of my favorite retails, includes the UT106 pre-installed. The UT106 is an additional DSP filter that's going to give you di DSP as digital signal processor. So in other words, it's going to it's going to sound better when you're listening to it and you're going to be able to pull out those low signal those low power signals a little bit better through the noise than you would without this without a DSP. So front-mounted speaker, superior basic performance, DSP capability, noise reduction, automatic notch filter, interference rejection, and IF shift, microphone compressor, RF gain control, Vox operation, all of these things right here. Again, it doesn't include anything fancy. It doesn't include a colored screen or a waterfall. It's not subcompact to put in a backpack, but it is 100 watts. It's a great radio. It's still made and still available in production today because it's been so tried and true. $630, you're probably not going to find a better priced full power 100 watt radio today in 2023 than the ICOM IC718. Go check this out. Links for this and everything else will be in the description below. Now, I checked several websites before bringing up RNL. RNL is another one of my favorite retailers. They have daily specials on the front page of their website every day, so go check that out. But everyone's out of stock with the Yezu FT891 right now. Okay, this is about the same price. The last one we talked about was only about $10 cheaper. 718 is $629.95, $630. The Yezu FT891 is about $639 right now. Now, again, RNL is out of stock. Gigaparts is out of stock. I checked two or three other websites, and they're all out of stock right now. So due to the holiday shopping spree... You know, I guess uh, they're they're kind of hard to get right now. But here's the great and unique thing about the FT-891. The FT-891 is in a category all its own, okay? It is the only truly mobile-sized 100-watt HF radio that exists in the world today. It's got a detachable face, so you can mount the radio under your seat, behind your seat, something like that, and mount the screen up somewhere else. So it's remote, what's called a remote mountable face and is a true 100-watt radio. ICOM makes another radio called an IC7100 that I'm not going to talk about today because it's also out of stock, but it's got a, somewhat of a strange-shaped head on it, and it's a little bit harder to remote mount that radio, although it is also mobile-sized and compact. It's also 100 watts, so it would work also. Due to chip shortages, due to global supply chain issues, the price on that radio has come up, and everyone's out of stock on it, so I'm not including it in the list today. But the Yezu FT891 is basically the only full-powered 100-watt mobile radio that, had, that you can take to the screen both off and on the radio that's made to go in a vehicle 
and just is a great performance. It's got an excellent receiver. It has a monochrome, so in other words, a uh, non-colored display. It does not have a built-in tuner nor a built-in sound card, so you have to get external things to do operations like FT8. It works beautifully with the Yezu ATOS screwdriver system. So if you want to know more about that screwdriver, you don't need a tuner with a screwdriver antenna, and it's really kind of made to work with a screwdriver antenna. So if you want to know more about that, search YouTube. There's a lot of really good videos out there about the ATOS antenna. The great thing about this is that it's a newer design. It came out a few years ago. It's got a DSP in it. It's got a really good receiver in it. It's small, compact, 100 watts, and it's definitely going on the list today because for, only, for less than $640, once they come back in stock, you can get into HF, put it in your car, drive around with it, or you can take it backpacking because it's not very large and heavy, and it's a great 100-watt radio. Brand new to the scene is a Yaesu FT710 AESS automatic uh, some speaker system, <laughs> something like that. It means it comes with this external speaker, and it's got really good filtering where you can kind of tune low signals and kind of get rid of the noise and pull those low signals out of the noise a little bit better. Works great for doing it. We did some demonstrations with it with uh, the rep from Yezu on this channel, and I'm really in favor of this radio. Right over $1,000, uh, $1,050 is what this radio is priced at right now, but it comes with this external speaker as pictured. Right, uh, it does not come with the screen. You see the screen on the on the display here. It doesn't come with that, but it comes with this external speaker, which you see pictured on the left side of the radio, right there. The speaker will attach to either the left or the right side of the radio, and we talked about that in a previous video as well. This one has a built-in waterfall. It has a color screen. It has built-in tuner. It has a built-in sound card, so you can plug it via USB directly into your computer and fire up programs like WSJTX to do FT8, JS65, uh, JS8 Call, some other uh, digital programs with it. $1,050 is a brand new radio. Just came out a few months ago at the time of this recording from Yezu's lineup, and it's already on the Sherwood list as one of the top five, if I'm not mistaken, at least in the top 10 radios as far as receiver performance for HF radios in the spectrum in production today. The next one, of course, is the one that probably most people will recognize, which is the ICOM IC7300. Now, it's currently listed at $100 more than the Yezu we just talked about, okay? But it does have, at the time of this recording, it has a mail-in rebate. So essentially, after you get your rebate, these two radios are the same price. They're so right about $10.50, three Black Fridays ago. You could get this radio for around $899, $875 to $900, somewhere in there. Global supply chain issues, chip shortages, everything else has made prices on most things go up. This is still a tried and true great HF radio for the beginner. It's It's got a full color screen, full waterfall, full display, a larger color screen than this version of Yezu does. It's got a built-in tuner. It's got a built-in sound card. It's got a lot of different extra bells and whistles with it that you can do. It's got an FT8 mode, so you can put it into WSJTX and plug it into the computer. It's really easy to use. Most new ham radio operators were being told to go get this radio back when it was selling for not like $900 to $1,000 because realistically, for the price of this radio, this is really the best package that was available for a long, long time. Now you kind of have a choice. Now you have a choice between the... 710, the 7300, or maybe the 891. The 891 does, doesn't have as many bells and whistles, and it's not a desktop radio to put on, in your ham shack or base station at home, which these two are. That's You can use these mobile. I know guys who do that, but they're really designed to sit on a desk and be used from a base station. So the, the ICOM IC7300, one of the best radios that's still out there, still in production, Great sounding audio coming from it. Easy to use, easy menus to navigate, and it's definitely going on the list today. Ten fifty after hundred dollar mail in rebate. Next on the line, and this is probably one of my favorite ones. This is probably my second favorite one we're going to talk about today. Watch to the end; you'll see my favorite radio we're going to talk about today. This is a Yezu FTDX10. Now, some people have talked about the differences between the seven ten for ten fifty and the DX10 for fourteen hundred dollars. So fourteen hundred dollars is the price of this. They had it lower there for. For a while, they had it around thirteen fifty, I think. And again, global supply chain issues being what they are, uh, prices on everything have gone up right now. So this is a great radio. This is a newer design than the seventy three hundred as well, but it's a little bit older design than the FT seven ten. It's larger, got a larger display, got pretty much all the bells and whistles. Got a few more filtering options than the seven ten does. It's higher up in the chain of receiver performance and receiver capability. It has the waterfall. It has a built in tuner. Has a built in sound card for doing digital modes like FT. And this is the radio that I take with me when I go parks on the air. 
In fact, I don't even have this radio in the shack. I keep it in a go box. I keep it in a Pelican style case in my tr usually in my truck or sometimes in my RV. And I take this radio with me every every time I go to parks on the air, every time I go to field day, I have it with me. Sometimes I'll take multiple radios to field day. But if I'm traveling in my vehicle, I have this radio with me in the Pelican case, and that's the one that I set up and go to most days. It is an excellent sounding radio. I think it's the top three of the Sherwoods reports as far as receiver performance in a lab environment. If you're going to work pileups on a de-expedition or work pileups on parks on the air, you're going to find a much better performance of the FTDX-10 filtering and receiver than anything else we've talked about today. Now, some people, this may not be in your budget, and that's okay, but you're definitely going to be able to notice once you start getting used to listening to HF signals in, uh, you know, you, you first get your general ticket, you probably can't notice as well. But once you've gone out and done parks on the air a few times, you've done field day, winter field day, a few things like that, you're going to start to notice how your ears hear HF signals. And then once you use a radio like this, you're going to notice where that extra receiver performance is important because it definitely makes a difference in the receive signals. If you're working a pileup, you've got 50 or 100 stations calling back to you at Parks on the Air. This one handles it much better than anything else we've talked about today. Okay, next on the list is a Kenwood. And I had to include Kenwood. I didn't include Kenwood in my last two or three videos like this for 2021, 2022, because they've kind of been out of the game for a while. I'm told that they're making a comeback but I don't really have any more information on that. That's just really kind of hearsay at this point in time. But the TS590SG is still in production. They still, even through all the, the COVID shortages and global supply chain issues, this radio has pretty much been available on most of your amateur radio websites today. So still in production, still available, brand new in a box, 1579. Some people just like the way a Kenwood sounds better. They like the menu system better. Again, you, you're seeing right here that the display is nothing fancy. It's monochrome. The backlight is amber. The text is black. It doesn't have a waterfall. It doesn't have a color screen. It doesn't have anything fancy like that. But this is a tried and true radio. Got a lot of buttons on the front here so you can easily change bands. You don't have to dig into a menu. All these buttons on the left-hand side of the big knob, the big knob is your tuning knob. Most HF radios have that. The buttons to the left of this big tuning knob that say 1.8, 3.5, 7, 10, 14, 18, those are all your bands for HF that you're going to be able to switch around to and talk on. And a lot of these radios like the 7300 and the FTDX10, you have to go into a menu. You have to push a band menu and then select from there. This one, had you can just select the band and switch back and forth very easily between bands there. This one also has, this is really cool, this one also has two antenna ports on the back. So you could hook up a vertical antenna or an in-fed half wave, and you can hook up a, a six meter antenna, or you can hook up a another multi-band antenna that you want to uh, compare the performance. An in-fed half wave hung as a sloper or a vertical antenna st sticking straight up, you can hook them both up to the radio and compare performance and receivership on, on both of those radios. So the Kenwood TS590SG is the successor to the popular TS590S. The SG offers 100 watts of output power while drawing only 21 amps. So when it's keyed down all the way, you're only going to be using 21 amps. The SG transmits on 160, 80, 60. It has, includes 60 meters, for those of you interested in 60 meters. 40, 30, 20, 17, 15, 12, 10, and 6 meters. It will receive all the way from 0 0.3 to 30 megahertz. So that's commonly called DC to daylight. Building on the success of the TS590S and improving, the 590SG features an even higher performance receiver with superior adjacent dynamic range. So basically, it's going to sound better than its predecessor. So the TS590S was the predecessor not made anymore. The SG is the current in production model. Some of you, if you're getting brand new into HF, this is getting into a realm where you're not going to notice as much until you've put some time behind the radio and actually worked some pileups, actually done some activations, maybe some contesting, maybe some parks on the air, maybe some field day events, and gotten used to listening to the radio. Most of this superior tuning and superior filtering features are not going to be noticeable by the brand new ham radio operator. But that does not mean they're not important. If you want to buy a radio today that you're still going to be wanting to use five and 10 years from now, because it's got all the bells and whistles that you don't know how to use yet, but you're going to learn how to use them over the next few years, this might be a great choice for you. If you've been watching my channel for any amount of time, you know how much I absolutely love Flex Radio. So Flex Radio the Flex Radio 6400 Signature Series SDR transceiver is currently on, um, uh, well, they got a big holiday deals with $100 off. So 
<laughs> that's you know when I'm recording this video now. Twenty two ninety nine is the price of this radio. This is a shack radio. I've got one sitting right there. You can't see it in the shot, but it's sitting right there. This is my favorite radio. They are incredibly quiet. They have excellent filtering. They have a really good, you can control this radio from software called Smart SDR for Windows, which is a free download from Flex Radio. So in reality, your club could purchase one of these radios and go set it up at the club station. And as long as you have internet there, all of your club members can go home, download Smart SDR for Windows on their home computers for free and connect to the radio and use it. Basically, only one of you at a time can use it, so you kind of you have to create a calendar of events, I guess, to, <laughs> to make sure nobody's using it at the same time as someone else. But it does have that capability of being completely controlled from a computer. It's also got what they call a maestro, which is an external screen and uh, buttons and knobs that you can connect to it via Wi-Fi or via Ethernet, some kind of LAN or internet connection, and connect a maestro to the radio so that you've got it all inclusive. That's what I use. I use my maestro. It's really cool because you can take the maestro around and it's not as big as carrying a whole radio around, and then I can connect back via the internet to my flex radio at home and operate pretty much anytime I want to as long as I have an internet connection to my maestro which I take with me places so flex radio is really forward thinking a lot of really cool gear for their radio a lot of really updated and great options for the amateur radio operator in the 21st century flex radio has a lot of really cool stuff they're working on so you're going to see a lot of updates coming from them soon Definitely one of my favorite radios, but a shack radio, not really meant for field operations, not really meant to be used mobile, meant to be used remotely. Set up in your shack and go elsewhere and remote back into your shack or your home or your home base station and use the radio. Flex Radio is one of the best contenders for that. So those are my top seven HF radios for 2023. I'll be interested to see what the year brings us, what type of new radios we might see from ICOM, Kenwood, Yezu, Flex Radio, Elecraft, maybe even Linko. I don't know if they're coming back into the HF world or not. But I'll be interested to see what we see from all of the big manufacturers for full-powered 100-watt HF radios for the amateur radio operator in 2023. Thanks for watching.